In this four-part video series on Riemann sums, we'll learn about the left-right midpoint rectangle approximation methods, as well as we'll learn how to calculate the trapezoid approximation. The third video, you'll learn how to create a spreadsheet that can perform sums with very large values of n quickly and easily, giving you accurate approximations that you would not want to do by hand. The final video will go through a visualization to help you understand whether approximations were under or over approximations and what characteristic of the function caused them to be such. Riemann sums part one we'll talk about the left, right, midpoint rectangle approximation methods. To illustrate this technique, we're going to use the function x squared bound by the x-axis on the interval from 0 to 2. In this case, we would like to use four equal subintervals. The left end point for our region is a is equal to 0. The right end point for our region is b is equal to 2. So those are our lower and upper bounds for our region. And since we're going to be using four equal subintervals, note that it does not have to be equal, but for our purposes currently, we're going to just focus on equal subintervals. That means we're going to cut this into four equal pieces. Therefore, since our region has a distance horizontally of two overall, each individual interval is going to have a width of 0.5. So the width of each subinterval, which we're going to call delta x, is going to be calculated by taking the distance of the whole interval divided by how many parts we want to cut it into. So 2 minus 0 over 4 is equal to 0.5, as shown right here. So let's start by looking at the left endpoint rectangle approximation method, otherwise known as LRAM. So the rectangles are going to be defined by the left side of each of the intervals. So, in other words, the first rectangle is defined by the height at zero, which is a very short rectangle. The second rectangle is defined by the function's height at 0.5. The third rectangle is defined by the function's height at 1. And the fourth rectangle is defined by the function's height at 1.5. So let's go ahead and write the sum of the areas of the four rectangles. The area of a rectangle is base times the height. So LRAM is going to be equal to the height at my first value, so my first starting x value is going to be here at a, at 0, for our left endpoints. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find the heights starting with that height, which is 0 in this case. And we're going to multiply by the width of each rectangle. And because we have equal intervals, each of these rectangles have a width of 0.5. So 0.5 times the height at the left endpoint, which is f of 0, plus 0.5, which is the width, times the height at our second left endpoint, which is height at 0.5, plus width times height at 1, plus 0.5 times height at 1.5. And we are going to use the function x squared to figure out the heights at each of those values. So let's go ahead and make a table to represent those. So I have x and f of x. So my height at 0 is 0. My height at 0.5 is 0 0.25. 0 0.5 squared is 0.25. My height at 1 is going to be 1. And my height at an x value of 1.5 is going to be a value of 9 fourths here.
and then I'm going to use these values in my summation. Now later on we're going to find um, uh, some notation that will allow us to represent uh, LRAM and RRAM uh, in a much more elegant fashion um, and to get much better approximations than four rectangles. So here I have my width times my height at each of those left endpoints which gives me an approximation uh, for four rectangles, four left-handed rectangles, and that's the notation I have for that, is going to be 1.75. And as you can see, it's going to be an underestimate for the actual value of the area. Now let's go about calculating the right endpoint rectangle approximation. This time, the heights of our rectangles are defined by the right side of each of the intervals. So f at point 5 is going to define the first height. My height at an x value of 1 is going to define the second rectangle's height. My function's height value at 1.5 defines the third rectangle's height. And finally, the last right-hand endpoint, my height at 2. So let's go ahead and set up my RRAM, my right hand rectangle approximation. This time our starting x value is located at our right hand endpoint here at 0 0.5. That'll be important for our spreadsheet later. So let's go ahead and set up our rectangles. Remembering, each rectangle is still the same width of 0 0.5. So we have 0 0.5, the width of our first rectangle, times the height at 0 0.5, plus width times height of the second rectangle, which is the height at 1, plus width times height of the third rectangle, which is at x equals 1.5, plus width of 0.5, once again, times height at the last x value, which is the right endpoint of 2. And we once again use our function to actually calculate those height values. So we go ahead and take 0.5 squared, and then we've got 0 0.5, which is our width, times 1 squared, which is 1, plus 0 0.5 times 1.5 squared, which is 9 fourths, plus 0 0.5 times 2 squared, which is 4. And we go ahead and we sum those all up. Now it's going to be important that you make note of our actual values for our summations. Here we've got our RAM of four subintervals is going to be approximately 3.75. As we're going to use these to make comparisons for our spreadsheet to make sure we've got our formulas correct. The next approximation is the midpoint rectangle approximation. Here, instead of using right endpoint or left endpoint, we're going to go to the midpoint of each and every interval. So here you can see is the midpoint of each of our four intervals. I'm going to calculate those x values. Now we go to the height of the function at each of the midpoints. I'm going to go to the last interval just because it's easier to see than the first interval. So I go up to the height at the midpoint and I go left and right to the ends of that interval. And I draw my rectangle and then I go to the next midpoint and I go up to the curve at that midpoint and go left and right and draw the rectangle. And then I go to the next interval, go up to the curve at the midpoint, go left and right, and then drop down to the x-axis to create my last interval rectangle. So I need to be able to calculate what the value of the individual x coordinates are for each of the midpoints before I can actually calculate what the areas are. So each width was 0.5 for the rectangle. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to ultimately be taking 0.5 times the height at each and every one of those midpoints. So the height at m1, the height at m2, the height at m3, so on and so forth. <laughs> 
So let's go about thinking in terms of how would we go about calculating those midpoints either by hand as well as how might we potentially structure that for a spreadsheet. So this first midpoint is going to be halfway in between 0 and 0 0.5. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to average 0 and 0.5 which gives me 0.25 and if I wanted to to find the next midpoint I could average 0.5 and I could average 1 and that would give me the next x value for my midpoint. However, I do recognize that each midpoint is going to be delta x away from the previous midpoint. So if I know the coordinate, the x coordinate of the first midpoint, to find the second midpoint, I just have to add delta x to the previous one. So that's going to be some helpful thinking um, for our spreadsheet calculations. So if I apply that to our specific interval here, once again, we set our first midpoint uh, x value was 0.25, the next one go down the road 0.5, which gives us 0.75, then to 1.25, and then finally to 1.75. And we're going to evaluate the heights at each and every one of those x values. So I've got my width times 0.25 squared. So that's the area of the first rectangle, plus 0.5 times 0.75 squared, plus 0.5 times 1.25 squared, plus, and then our final rectangle will be 0.5, the width of the rectangle, times 1.75 squared. So that gives us a midpoint rectangle approximation for four subintervals, uh, which will be approximately 2.625. And we'll have to wait until the final video of the series to determine whether this is going to be an over or an under approximation.